going down, folks? It is Diecast, Blowfire here again, and it is finally time for my 2021 Chase or Playoff predictions. Oh my goodness, man. You know, Chase Elliott's is the defending cup champion, but I don't think, I don't think it's going to be so easy for him to repeat. So, without further ado, make sure to give the video a big thumbs up, and let's go ahead into doing our predictions. We're going to do a little bit different this year. We're going to use Diecast, so it's going to be pretty cool. Howdy, howdy, folks. It is Diecast Buffet here again. And today, well, it is time for the NASCAR playoffs tonight. So what better time to do our playoff prediction here? We have a actual playoff grid here. Now, last year, I usually kind of just talked and I just, you know, put fancy graphics on the screen. But no, you know what? We're going to display this with Diecast because why not? So we have 16 drivers here. I don't have the 2021 Bowman, I know. But uh, we have all of our playoff cars here. We're going to decide who is going to win the first round, the second round, the third, and go to the championship for and make the championship bid. So, make sure to give the video a big thumbs up. Let's go and hop into it. So, three races, folks. Just three races. You got, of course, Darlington tonight. You have Richmond, Bristol night. So, three very interesting racetracks to kick off a playoffs. And to me... I think the best drivers in the business are really going to excel here. So that puts a big bubble on Tyler Reddick, Amarola, Bell. I would even throw in maybe a Keselowski with a lame duck situation. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So the first driver I'm going to pick, uh, this one's going to be pretty easy. I'm going to move Kyle Larson to win at Darlington, to win the Southern 500. This guy is on a championship level caliber season. I mean, what is this, 2001 Jeff Gordon? I mean, this cat is rolling right now. I'm going to take Larson to win Darlington. I think he's going to win Darlington. Now we have Richmond coming up. Who's going to take it at Richmond? You know, one driver that I really think is going to finally find Victory Lane that hasn't found it in a while. Martin Truix Jr. I think Truix is going to win Richmond. He should have won it earlier. Well, guess what? You know, <laughs> Mr. Bowman took it. So we're going to take Martin Truix Jr. to win at Richmond and in Bristol. This was won by Kevin Harvick last year, guys. But um, I'm going to be honest with you. Kevin Harvick has had a horrible season. I might even put more stock into maybe Cole Custer, Chase Briscoe, and Eric Alvarola, three drivers against one to have a better shot to win Bristol than Kevin Harvick this year. Ah, this one's going to be tough, right? We didn't have a concrete uh, spring race here. We had a freaking dirt race, which was crazy. But one driver that I'm going to really look at that could shine and wake up in the playoffs here, this 24 car here, folks, I'm going to take William Byron. William Byron to win at Bristol night. That's going to give him a lot of playoff points. It's going to give him a lot of momentum because the second round, folks, is the dangerous one. Roval. Then you have Talladega and, of course, Las Vegas. So, really, that one's going to... That's going to end a lot of championship hopes right there in the second round. So, for the first round, we have our three winners here. But who is going to get the cut? So, unfortunately, the first driver I'm going to have to cut from round number one, fellas. I hate to do it, but Michael McDowell. Look, here's the thing. The only way the 34 car advances to the next round, guys, he's going to have to have a flawless first round. Flawless first round. As of right now, he has a legitimately good shot. The problem is, is Richmond and Bristol, okay? If he goes to Richmond or goes to Bristol and he has any issues, doesn't get, you know, any stage points, gets caught up in a wreck, whatever, he's out. He's going to be in a must-win situation. Um, even though Kevin Harvick has no playoff points, I, he has probably a two to if not three times better chance to advance um, I, I just really don't like the situation the 34 car is in. They don't have that consistent speed. If we get, you know, let's say Kurt Busch, Brad Kay, Christopher Bell, and then you have Redick or Amarola, let's say they go out to the Darlington tonight and have a big wreck. They have a big wreck. They're playing from behind. They have to do some contrarian things to get points the next two races. We really could see four drivers that were not expected uh, to be an early exit. Heck, maybe even a Joey Logano. That could find a way for the 34 car to sneak in. But if the 34 does advance to the second round, guys, watch out. Roval and Talladega, anything can happen there. The second driver I'm going to have to eliminate from the playoffs here, I'm going to take Eric Almirola out of contention here, guys. Look, he had the unbelievable win at New Hampshire. I'm so proud of him for winning that because he just took it from everyone. I just don't see that 10 car going to Darlington, going to Richmond, and going to Bristol going to be able to get more points than a Kurt Busch, than a Denny Hamlin, than a Joey Logano. Because the truth of the matter is, is that I just don't see anyone, you know, not advancing to let that 10 car through. 
The third driver, look, this one's a sleeper here. The eight car, part of me really wants to bring him to the round two, okay? But I, 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 I just think Christopher Bell, first playoffs, it generally doesn't favor new drivers very well. I'm going to take um, the number 20, and we're going to eliminate him from round one. So here's the rest of the playoff grid here. I don't expect any major upsets. Uh, right, last year, Ryan Blaney was a first-round exit, surprisingly enough, but I don't know, guys. <sighs> Brent Keselowski really concerns me because he's a lame duck, right? He's a lame duck this year. You, you know darn well they're not going to give him better equipment than Ryan Blaney and Joey Logano because it's so much more marketable for Penske to have a 12 or 22 win the championship than a, a guy who's going to go own Roush Fenway Racing. So I, I just... It's the lame duck situation. It really is. But can Tyler Reddick steal a playoff spot and get in the round two? You know, this playoffs is not going to be cut and dry. It's not going to be, oh man, it's this, it's going to happen this way. And, you know, it's it's not going to be super predictable. I'm going to go on a limb here, guys. And I'm going to say Kurt Busch out first round. I'm just going to say that one car is going to get some trouble. He's going to find himself behind. It's him or Brian Kozlowski. I think the eight car. I'm telling you, man. I, I just that eight car has ran so much better than I think where his playoff position is. But that is going to be the first round exits and our first round winners. Let's go to round two. Alrighty, folks. Time for round number two. Four drivers out. So we already had three winners. Kyle Larson sitting at like 57, maybe 60 plus stage points. I would not be surprised. This guy wins what uh, three out of the six stages available. Um, in the first round, I would not be surprised. But Talladega, Las Vegas, it's Vegas, then Talladega, then the Roval. Look, the, the Roval is going to be really um, popular for one driver, but don't count that five car winning that Roval. So here we go, folks. Denny Hamlin's a great restrictor plate race here, but one thing he really struggles at is Las Vegas Motor Speedway. He's never won there. He's had some shots, but do I truly think he's going to be able to get through Talladega and the Roval? I just feel like he's been really lucky this year. Honestly, I think he has been really lucky this year. He's been super consistent. Could we see that consistency struggle here in the round of two? Because I guarantee you guys, it's not going to be a cut and dry bottom four that are going to be out here um, out of nowhere. My first elimination, though, Kevin Harvick. Look, this guy has had some very, very tough goes at Talladega. I don't see anything for him in this road course department. Stuart Haas Racing, besides Indianapolis, really has not been that good on road courses. He's had a lot of bad luck. He's even ran some Xfinity races, still has not righted the ship, so to speak. Uh, I think he's going to be out the second round. But your winner, though, Las Vegas. Now, Kyle Larson won this race early on, okay? He won this race back in the springtime. But I think Hendrick Motorsports, look, they're going to be giving it everything, right? But you know another team that's going to also be doing this that is very hot right now? That 12 car, guys. Ryan Blaney is going to win at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. That's my prediction here. They're peaking at the right time. It's the final 10 races of the Gen 6 era. You know, you have if you have the parts, use them because you ain't going to be able to use them next year. I really think the 12 cars are going to have a great shot to win. I think he's going to win Las Vegas. So we have Kevin Harvick out. Ryan Blaney is advancing to the round of eight. Now we're going to Talladega. Oh, boy. <laughs> we're going to Talladega Super Speedway. Look, this is going to be weird. This is, this is going to be a crazy race. Usually, I like to pick a outside of the playoff driver here, but I'm going to go with a little bit of a wild card here, guys. And I know a lot of people probably say Michael McDowell, Matt Benedetto. I truly don't think he's going to win this race, and that's why I'm picking him. Alex Bowman, Talladega. I don't know why, but I'm just going to I'm just going to shoot in the dark on this one. It's Talladega. I'm going to say he's going to find a way to jump ahead of that cut line with a huge victory at Talladega. Now we're going to the Roval. Now. Chase Elliott, let's be honest, his odds to win the Roval were 8 out of 10. I mean, if he doesn't win it, he had a he, he must have had a catastrophic failure, okay? But Kyle Larson has quietly became one of the best road course racers in the league. And honestly, you could say the 9, the 19, and the 5 are the best in the business today. So who's going to take the Roval? I don't know. We could see some weather kind of shake it up, but, you know, you know that 9 car has won back-to-back -back Rovals. I think he's going to win it again, guys. I, I really do. I'm going to say Chase Elliott's going to win the Roval. He's going to put himself into the round of A. And now we have to make some very hard decisions here for the cut line. The three drivers are going to have to be eliminated here, guys. I think Tyler Reddick's luck is going to dry out here, guys. you you, you got to get through two wild card races 
I, I just, I think with Bowman winning, that's one less spot he could have depended on to advance with. You know, I think Bowman's going to be below the cut line. He's going to be in danger. So I think if he wins a race, that eight car's chances are going to be must win. So I'm going to say the eight car is out. I'm going to say Joey Logano. I'm going to say his luck is going to run out a little bit. Some struggles. I, I just don't see the 22 car heating up. You know, Part of me really wants to bring the 24 out, but I'm going to say the two car. I'm going to say three Fords in the second round are done. So that means Blaney wins Vegas, Bowman, Talladega, Elliott wins the Roval, and now Reddick, Harvick, Logano, and Brad Keselowski done. Think about it, guys. Stuart Haas Racing has been pretty much nothing this year, right? So the Ford camp has really been down. Penske has been the only thing truly keeping them going. Brad Keselowski won a wild card race at Talladega, okay? So if you exclude that, he hasn't done really anything. Joey Logano, he's already won this year. Granted, it was at the Bristol Dirt Race. That is a super wild card race. Kevin Harvick has won anything. Tyler Reddick, I think, is just going to be a victim of, of crashes or whatever. So I, I, I just truly don't see enough there to get those Penske fours, the 22 and the 2, into the round of 8. Alrighty, folks, it is time for the round of 8. Only Four drivers are going to advance out of this one, guys, and this one is going to be extremely tough to make it because what happens every year, guys, you get one driver who has north of 55 playoff points. He's pretty much a shoe win. If he doesn't have two consecutive DNFs in one round, he's going to make it. But one driver that I just think is a shoe win here, and I, I, I would be utterly shocked if Larson does not advance. He's got 55 points based on my bracket here with an extra win. He's probably going to get four to five stages into this point. So you got to think about it. That's 10 extra playoff points, possibly north of 65 points right there. Kyle Larson is a sure bet favorite to make the final four. I, I just cannot see a way he does not make it. Kyle Larson, he has way too much speed. And if you think about it, the late summer, he kind of transitioned a little bit off. What I think they were doing is they got their playoff points. They peaked, right? They took their best stuff. They're saving it. Chad Knauss is running Hendrick Motorsports. They're, they're four teams. He's running it. I'm telling you, this guy is the greatest crew chief ever in NASCAR history. He knows these race cars better than anyone. And I tell you what, man, that five car is going to be one mean machine coming to the playoffs here. So I'm going to say Larson advances, but he doesn't have to win. I'll decide my winners now. So we're going to, of course, you have Kansas. You know, It's Texas, Kansas, and then Martinsville, okay? Texas was won by Kyle Larson. He's really good at Texas. He had some great runs there in the Ganassi camp. But do I think he's going to win there? I don't know, guys. I, I don't know. I'm still looking at some of these drivers outside the playoffs here that have already been eliminated. I I just, I don't, you know what? I'm going to say Larson wins Texas. Going to go with it. He's going to sweep Texas here, this year. He won the All-Star race. So that puts him at, what, 70 points he's locked in regardless. But even if he doesn't win, he's gonna be he's gonna be moving on. So I think Kyle Larson's just gonna make things even more difficult uh, by winning a race there. So now we go on to Kansas. Okay, this is generally a Penske or Joe Gibbs Racing dominant track. Kyle Busch here uh, won in the springtime, but I'm gonna go a little bit out of the box on this one, guys. 22 car, a playoff eliminated driver here. It's gonna be a little too a little too late. I think he's going to win at Kansas. I should put him over here actually. But a little bit of an asterisk because he is already eliminated. Joey Logano is going to win at Kansas. I was thinking Kevin Harvick, but I just, I truly think Kevin Harvick, it is set in stone. That team just does not have the speed. They could be putting all their eggs into Gen 7, you never know. But I, I think Penske might steal one more race there. So we have one more race left, guys. Martinsville. Chase Elliott won this race last year, but I'll be honest with you, I don't think the nine car is going to win it. Um, you go back to the spring uh, Martinsville race, the night race, rather. Um, it was won and dominated by Martin Truex Jr., okay? Uh, <laughs> I mean, that cat just owns that track right now. But I, I just think with the playoffs on the line, there's going to be just, it, there's way too much on the line. I think Kyle Busch. I, I, I think Kyle Busch is going to win at Martinsville, and he's going to put himself into the final four here. So now we have six drivers here, and it's going to get tough because Kyle Busch is locked in. Kyle Larson is locked in here. We got two drivers left, and you got to think about playoff points here. So these guys are going to have to point their way in. We know the nine car has, at, at this point, he has three wins because based on our bracket, he won the Roval. He already had the win at Road America, and he already won at Coda. So that's 15 there plus all the stages. So he's got to play about 25 roughly. 
uh, Blaney. He's already won another race in the playoffs. He won at Las Vegas. That puts him at, what, he, he won Daytona. He won Michigan. He won Atlanta. Now he has Vegas. So that's going to put him in a really good spot in playoff points. But the common denominator is going to be mistakes, right? Who is not going to make those mistakes? Who is going to get through the playoffs cleanly? You know what? I, I just, I truly think this is a great year for Ryan Blaney. I'm going to move Blaney over. And in fact, I'm just going to move the Logano out of the way here. I'm going to put Blaney into the final four here. Um, I picked Blaine to win the championship before the season started. And quietly, he has gotten so good. I just think Blaney is going to have a very good playoffs. But for every one we advance, we got to eliminate one. Alex Bowman's playoff amazing season with four wins projected him to win at Talladega. I think his season is going to finally end there. I, I mean, I know he has a lot of playoff points there, but I, I just don't see that 48 right now being as strong as they need to be. I'm going to put William Byron in that same wheelhouse. I love William Byron. I love what they're doing at the 24 camp. I just, look, you have four drivers. There's 40 cars out there. The best four are going to make it, right? Um, I, I just don't think the 48 and the 24 are going to find a way to get in there. They're putting all their eggs in the nine and the five card. That's the most marketable drivers. Every team does it. They have one really stout car, and they put all their eggs into it. The 18 cars, generally that 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 car they, uh, they give everything to. So we have three drivers here. <laughs> and uh, all, the, both of these drivers have had some interesting situations with Chase Elliott. Do I truly think Chase Elliott is going to make the final four here, guys? Well, let's be honest here. He hasn't won in an oval track this whole year, okay? Um, I'm projecting him not to win one unless he wins Phoenix, which we'll get to that in a minute. I just truly don't think that nine car is going to have enough speed to get there. You got to think about the 19 car here. He's won multiple times here. Um, Martinsville. You know, he runs so good that Martinsville, right? I, I think the 19 car and the 11 car are going to be much faster than the Hendrick Motorsports cars at the low downforce, high horsepower racetracks. But do I, do I truly think that 19 car is going to move on based on points or the 9 car or the 11? I think the 11 is not going to make the Final Four based on the stage points. He, he, he has... He has a few stages he's won, but he's never won a race this year, right? And I don't project him to win one in the playoffs, so he's going to have to win to move on, right? I mean, if we're talking about a driver who hasn't won all year to move on and, and eliminating the 24 and the 40, I just don't think that's realistic. I think the 11 car is going to be out early uh, in the final rounds here, but you got two drivers here, guys. One spot. Alrighty, folks. I have made my decision. I just... I, I have a feeling... The 19 car is going to make some mistakes in the playoffs here. I, I feel like their pit crew is not up to code. Speeding penalties. I think the 19 crew is going to miss out. And that's going to make the Final Four a very, very fan favorite. Think about it. Blaney, Kyle Larson, and Chase Ed are arguably the three biggest positive fan bases. And then you have the Kyle Busch, who's kind of the, the villain of the sport. You know, I think this is going to be a great Final Four based on these projections here. Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, Blaney, and Chase Elliott. Uh, a lot of people would consider this the good guys versus the bad. But honestly, I think this is going to be a very popular Final Four. Alrighty, folks, it is time for the Final Four race. Phoenix, Arizona, here's our Final Four projected drivers here, guys. Chase Elliott, as of right now, has won, what? He's won a Coda, he's won at Road America, and he's won the Roval. No Speedway wins here, guys. No Speedway wins. I'm projecting Phoenix. He did win it last year, but I gotta be honest with you. I don't think he was necessarily the best car, though. I think Logano had something for him last year. I think the nine car, you have to be perfect, obviously, to win Phoenix uh, for the Final Four championship. But is that nine car going to be enough to take on these three cats? Ryan Blaney, he's won everything. I mean, he's won at Super Speedway, two-mile track, one-and-a-half mile, and then we're projecting another win at Vegas. So that's, that's going to be pretty big for him. I think Phoenix is a good track for Blaney. I really do. Kyle Busch, he hasn't won here in a while. Maybe give it like four years or so. But Kyle Busch, you know... I feel like it's feast or famine with this 18 car. I really do. I feel like they're either going to go out there, or they're going to they're going to have a horrible race, or they're going to go out there and they're going to win two stages and possibly win the race itself. I, I feel, feel like it's going to be feast or famine for the 18 car. They have three wins based on this projection. They win Martinsville to get in. Last year we picked Chase Elliott to win Martinsville and put himself in the final four. We didn't pick him to win, but we did pick him to get to the final four here for the first time in his career. I'm going to say 18 car is going to have a very it, it, it's going to be cut or dry. It's either going to be great or he's going to be terrible. That's that's my projection right there for the 18 car. The 5 car. Look, Phoenix, he made some mistakes there, okay? But I think that 5 car 
he 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 is the, the the championship favorite, right? I truly feel like he could race any track anywhere, and he would be fantastic at. Maybe not so much a Richmond. I think Richmond's still kind of a weak link there. But I gotta tell you what, man. I think the five car is going to excel. Um, this is going to be an extremely tough bout. But I gotta eliminate one of these drivers here. Now, one driver do I I don't think is going to win this championship. I think it's Kyle Busch. Again, you're going to have to be mistake free. But you're also going to have to do something different than the 5 and I think the 12 to win this championship here. The 9 car, I feel like he's not playing with house money. Last year, he was playing with house money. He won Martinsville. He wasn't projected to be in the Final Four, and he found that momentum, and he just, he just you know, just ran with it, right? I don't think that 9 car is playing with house money right now. The 12 car, I, I, I really think the 12 car is a sleeper for a lot of people. A lot of people didn't expect Blaine to have the season he has. Every year, he only has one win. I projected Ryan Blaney to win the championship this year. And, uh, well, and based on my projection, he had four wins. Right now, he has three wins in real life. I think Blaney is a legitimate championship contender. Is he going to be better than nine card? I personally think so. Unfortunately, I love Chase Sally, but I, I just don't think that nine car is going to have the run he's going to need to. And 2021 has been really a, 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 a changing of the guard in the sport. You know, you think about it, how many years has Hamlin, Harvick, Kyle Busch, Truex truly dominated all these one and a half mile races, right? And here comes Hendrick Motorsports. Here comes the Chevrolets. They're out there winning everything this year. Uh, I, I just think this year, the unpredictableness, Kyle Larson is the championship favorite, hands down. I just don't see how you can beat him. Can the 12 outrun the five at Phoenix? To me, for the 12 to win the championship, he has to be flawless. Has to be flawless. The Kyle Larson camp, they have made some speeding penalties. But I don't think the five car is going to be that aggressive. I think they know they can win it outright with just speed. I don't think they need to try anything contrarian. Just go out front and beat the 12 car in the 18 and the 9. I'm going to say Kyle Larson is going to win the championship here. All right, folks, that is it for my uh, championship prediction for 2021. Kyle Larson, I think the undisputed favorite. I, I just, I hope he wins the championship, but I realistically think he's going to win it. This guy is just, it, it, it's just that magical season. Everyone doubted him, right? Everyone doubted him, said he couldn't do it. He's done. His career is over. I think this cat is going to go out there and he is going to prove the world wrong and go and win a championship. I, I, I just think... The five car. How cool would it be to see the five winning a championship for the first time since, I think, what, 1995 with Labonte. Uh, of course, this car could have won the championship in uh, 2009 with Mark Martin. So, uh, pretty, pretty cool stuff here, guys. So, what do y'all think? Who is your championship prediction? Make sure to comment down below if you don't mind. Make sure to give the video a big thumbs up. Thumbs up if you can. And uh, if you want to get this car, you know, the Kyle Larson stuff, or heck, any of these 2021 diecasts, make sure to go to Circle B Diecast, guys. Use that promo code down below, Diecast Buffet. Any order is $20 or more, and you will get free shipping, and you can complete your 2021 collection here, getting all these beautiful paint schemes for this season. So make sure to go and uh, get your cars ordered, fellas. Uh, they got them over there at Circle B Diecast, so... Uh, any orders, $20 more, free freaking shipping, guys. So, have a great one, folks. Thank you all so much for watching the video. It is going to be one wild run to the end of the season. Have a great one. Diecast Buffet, signing off.